I would call this a battle, being newly diagnosed with scleroderma. The tests were run four times, came back positive. So at that point, it, I was diagnosed officially at the end of the year. I had a close friend who passed away in 2014. She battled with a disease for six years. I actually got to see what this disease does to a person's body. When I first saw that I had the, the bad antibodies that relate to scleroderma diagnosis, I immediately thought of my friend and I was terrified. Scleroderma falls into the rheumatology field, and I have been battling autoimmune disease for uh, 30 years now, so half my adult life. It's been difficult trying to find out where to go and how exactly this disease may affect me. It causes anxiety to have this vast assortment of information when it's Pandora's box. It's terrifying. Who knew? Here's the fairy I need someone to say, close the box, let me give the information that's pertinent. Let me tell you where to go. Can't go be a fairy without the fairy glitter. I have finally gotten to that point because I have found advocates, an advocacy group. They've told me, go here, go there. Don't go here, don't go there. It's been a process finding how to responsibly research this and, and stay on top of it. I want to have reliable resources to give to friends and family. I would say that's adequately sparkly. That'll do the trick. Enchant some little, little children. This can be literally a life-saving program as long as you like. I am actively involved with Thrival Cancer Foundation's DIVA program. We have DIVA and Dude. Like that, so you're not having to flip it all over. And they, they have been the first group that I joined in regards to cancer. I'm very appreciative of people who are supporting us in this journey. I joined a group that advocates and supports children battling cancer. They would find out about young children, cancer patients, through the oncology doctor. And during that time, we lost quite a few children. I just got to the point where I could not emotionally take it anymore. Being part of that group, I was able to go out in costume to Morgan's Wonderland. Miss Brooke was so excited about us, uh, y'all having these. My granddaughter suffered from a, uh, a rare a mitochondrial disease. It actually wound up being fatal. All right, come on girls. To go out there, dress up in a costume, meet people like my Morgan. I know that I'm making a difference. Rather than just holding it, you walk like this. So I give, but I get so much more in return. You know, it takes my mind off of my own personal struggle. And I think that's part of being an advocate for anything is your message and, and show people, in spite of it all, I am living my best life. That S is for sale, boat T is for try. And I'm gonna continue to give. And as long as I am physically able to get out and be out there, I will be out at that park and giving it my all. Shot. Oh, bump off the doggy germs. Little bubbles. And the 
cartridge goes in. Let me click it. And So I have shifted gears uh, because I realized that a lot of my efforts now are going to have to go into the scleroderma end of it all. You know, I'm active with the online support group, but it's really no more at this point than doing some chats, input, reading others' input. Scleroderma.org, I'm in the right spot. The past nine years and the experience I've gotten from the breast cancer groups and the breast cancer community and doctors, it's just been invaluable. And I can't imagine starting this new journey without having that knowledge and that support going forward. I have tested four times positive for the anti-SDL70 antibody. So that's telling me that I would be more likely to have the diffuse, which is organ, skin, everything, um, should this thing take off. But that's why I take immunosuppressants. That's why I'm the oral chemo, because uh, it's to keep my immune system suppressed and hope to God they just, they don't go rampant. I think the rare disease diagnosis is extremely hard mentally. Because tonight I will take four pills. Not only are you facing self-esteem issues, but it's also, you really have to look at your own mortality. My therapist has encouraged me to use my art as an expression of what I'm going through. I had this pent, this grief, and she says, Paula, draw it, paint it. And I, I did. It's me in the midst of my grief, curled up in a ball. There's black butterflies in the background. It's just this dark cloud sometimes that, that consumes you. They're there in spirit, but they're not here on earth with us like they should be. So they're unattainable, they're out of reach. It's not a bright, beautiful butterfly that I used to be able to touch and hug. It's their spirit and their presence, but in a lost way where they're no longer with us. Just coming to terms with the emotional aspect of this terrifying disease has been very difficult. If, God forbid, it came to that, you would be able to see it on my face, on my hands. It's something that can't be hidden. And it takes a strong person to really be able to walk out into the world, whether it's bald because of chemotherapy or because your face or your body has been changed by this illness, to walk out and say, yes, I'm a warrior, but let me tell you about my story because I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna live my best life despite of it.